This is a supplemental video for chapter number 12 where we're going to just get an overview for taxes Hawaii businesses are subject to. You're not going to be responsible for doing any activities uh, regarding Hawaii taxes for chapter 12. In fact, I'm not sure we'll be tested on chapter 12 for our next exam. But of all the different videos, of all the different topics we covered during the semester, this topic, taxes, uh, Hawaii businesses are subject to, is probably the most practical because if you have a Hawaii business, you're definitely going to be subject to one or more of the taxes we discuss here. If we take a look at the Lao Lima chapter resource, resources folder for chapter 12, we have links here for um, lots of different tax forms for Hawaii. And this is just a sample of some of them. In the case of the general excise tax, a lot of people um, call it by mistake a sales tax. There's a introduction to that tax it's a brochure and a similar one for the Hawaii Transit Accommodation Tax. So the covers kind of look like this here. This is for the general excise tax and the other one is for the transit accommodation. So just to get an overview, these are really good brochures to review. But let's take a look again at the other links we have here. So uh, there's links for Hawaii tax, income tax forms here. So we've been studying federal income taxes throughout the semester. So now likewise, you're going to be doing Hawaii income tax returns at the same time when you do that federal returns. So if you don't see the link here for the specific form you want, you should go to the Hawaii Department of Taxation website here and then probably use this link here called forms and publications where you can download various types of forms probably by the category category meaning the type of tax and the type of entity like individual partnership or corporate even s corporations that we've covered during our current semester let's focus on first the sales taxes, really not sales tax, but the general excise tax by looking at the tax form. So here is form, form um, 40, G49, which is an annual once a year return. But you should be filing a similar form called G45, possibly monthly or quarterly or semi-annually depending upon how much taxes are owed will determine how often you file the uh, periodic form but this annual G49 form will summarize all the previous periods for the year and I'm making sure this so-called reconcile or correct any mistakes made during the year now again a lot of people mistakenly call this type of tax, sales tax. Sales taxes are paid by the customer, paid by the consumer who buys the merchandise or buys the service. This general excise tax for Hawaii is charged not to the customer but to the business that sells the merchandise or the service. And it's only customary for that business to pass on the tax to the customer. It's not a requirement to pass on the tax if it were um, uh, treated as a sales tax. You would have the customer pay it. But here it's a tax charged to the business and it's only customary and customers expect it that they pass on the tax to the consumer, to the customer. And there's different tax rates here. Here it says there's a tax, low tax rate of half a percent. That's in decimal point zero zero five. If the sale is a wholesale, in other words, let's say your company is selling to another company who in turn sells it to a consumer or another company. So your initial sale to your customer is a wholesale subject to this half percent tax. Same thing with a manufacturer when they sell, it's going to be sold 
uh, to a wholesaler or a retailer in turn selling it to the ultimate customer. Now if you sell to the ultimate customer who will consume that item, that service, then you're subject to a 4% rate mentioned over here. Uh, keep in mind that this excise tax is taxing both the sale of personal property or even intangible property and services. Here you can see wholesale services or professional services, um, not just tangible property. Um, most states will tax only um, tangible property, but Hawaii taxes almost everything for this excise tax. And the main one is this 4% rate. There's uh, another rate for insurance commissions, a very small here on page 2, 0.15% or in decimal 0 0.0015. And then in addition to the regular tax rate, there's something called a surge charge or a surtax. Whenever you see the term sur, that usually implies an additional tax beyond the regular tax. And in the case of sales or, uh, made on the island of Oahu, there's an additional half percent tax. So that's the 4% regular, the main 4%, plus another half a percent. If it's a wholesale sale, then you wouldn't have this surtax tacked on. Recently, the other islands have also had their own um, surtaxes, like uh, the Big Island and Kauai. Now, the, when you pass on the tax to your customer, let's say we're going to charge a 4% a tax. Hawaii, the Department of Taxation, is going to expect you to pay 4% of the total to be collected or collected. Okay, that includes the tax. So let me go through an example here of how to calculate the tax on the tax. So let's say that we have a $1,000 sale and you're going to charge your customer, pass on the tax to your customer for that four and the surtax of a half a percent. So the tax you're going to charge comes out to $45. So the total you collect is the original 1000 sales price plus the tax of $45 or $1,045. Now when you collect this money, the state government is not expecting you to pay them $45. They expect you to pay 4%, 4.5% of the amount you collect which comes out to $47 and some odd cents. Here I'll go out to the, all the way out to three decimal places. So really, you're losing, even though you're collecting the tax, about $2.03 on this $1,000 sale, which can add up if you have thousands or million dollars of sales. So to kind of break even in the amount of tax you collect versus the tax you have to pay, they actually will charge you a higher rate. So the next time you go to a store, take a look at that receipt and see the rate that they charge for sales tax. Again, really general excise tax. And it probably comes out to a rate of 4.712%. So the tax they collect, let's say the store, is $47.12. So the total you pay them is 1047 12 and the government wants four and a half percent of that total amount collected, which should come out to the exact same amount that they had collected, 4712. So in this case, the amount of tax collected is equal to the amount of tax now that has to be paid to the state government. So probably this is the rate you'll see for most retail sales. And again, it's not just sales of merchandise, but but services. So if you're a professional accountant and you charge your client a thousand dollar fee, you should probably tack on this 4.712% because the state government is going to expect you to pay that amount to them. Let's uh, continue looking at that tax form here. 
So again, the rate is a uh, half a percent for wholesale sales. Again, you're selling merchandise or services to someone in turn that resells it to their customers. And then if they sell it to the ultimate consumer, be it again merchandise or services, they charge that 4% rate or uh, again tacking on the cert tax and the tax on the tax that would be 4.712% so you should be filing this similar form to the 47 not 47 but G49 or the G45 either monthly quarterly or semi-annually and then reconciling it on this form okay this uh, uh, half percent for Oahu, that's supposed to be paying for the rail transit system. I'm not really sure what the other islands are using their cert tax for, possibly for promoting um, uh, infrastructure or tourism. Okay, so that's the Hawaii general excise tax. Now, in addition to this tax, if you run a hotel operations, if you run a bed and breakfast, or the so-called transient accommodation where the um, customer uses the property for less than a consecutive 180 days and of course uh, for most hotels the, the person is not going to stay there for more than that period or even the case of a temporary rental in addition to the general excise tax we saw the landlord, the owner, has to pay a 10 and a quarter percent transient accommodation tax on the amount of uh, rent collected on the hotel fee charge. And again, the main thing here that's in the news are the uh, Airbnb, the uh, rentals, where maybe the zoning of the property is not legal but they still want to collect the tax and they have had problems trying to reconcile the two laws here and even in the case of so-called timeshares where the owner of the property is using it there's a formula to figure out how much transient accommodation tax to tax those owners and of course if the timeshare owner rents it out it would be this tax here up here in either case the total values are going to be taxed at a um, ten and a quarter percent rate here you can see it built into the form right over here and this is in addition to the general excise tax so if you're looking at combining both when you collect rental income from a transient person again someone using the property for less than 100 consecutive 80 days you're looking at probably f close to 15 percent of taxes off the top okay. so that's this form TA 1 and 2 let's take a look at income taxes so if you're an individual and you are a resident for the whole year you're gonna file this form N11 and report your worldwide income no matter where you did business now if you did business in another country or another state you may have to file tax returns for that country and state in the case of another state you may be able to um, claim a credit here on a Hawaii return let's take a look at um, the page 2 where the numbers the dollar amounts are first reported our starting point would be the adjusted gross income from your federal return and then we adjust that amount for Hawaii law so in the case of business income your business income would already be included here for a sole proprietor or for a partner in a partnership or for a S corporation shareholder since it's already in your federal AGI it's going to be now included in your Hawaii AGI but because federal and Hawaii have different laws the next few lines are either to increase or decrease that federal AGI to come out to Hawaii AGI based on Hawaii law 
So the common ones in the case of business, if you remember under the um, Tax Cut and Job Act, there's this big uh, bonus depreciation of first year. Hawaii hasn't really adopted that. So Hawaii, you would be adding in more, well, taking away really deductions here, making the AGI bigger. But that's going to give you more basis now to depreciate for your Hawaii return. So in future years, you're going to have a bigger Hawaii depreciation being deducted over here in line 18. Or recently, the entertainment expense was eliminated on federal returns. But Hawaii still allows you, at least for now, 50% deduction for that. So that would be subtracted again over here, reducing your Hawaii AGI number. Okay, so this is the individual return for a Hawaii resident. Oh, and if you pay state taxes to other states and you had to report that same income here on a Hawaii return because you're a Hawaii resident, then you possibly can claim a credit, a tax credit. I don't think there's a form for it, but it's initially reported on if. Uh, another form this one here called uh, schedule CR and you have to go through a couple calculations to figure out uh, if there's any limitations for that state tax credit paid to another state let's take a look at another Hawaii form if you're a Hawaii partnership here it says that you just recopy the amounts on your federal form 1065 that we had seen a couple chapters ago but then if you do business in other states, you may need to allocate the business income. I shouldn't say allocate, but we use the word apportion, business income between your states. So here's Hawaii and here's all the other states. If you remember, there's an apportionment formula we covered in the first video. And it's similar here for Hawaii, but for partnerships, there's no tax form to do that apportionment, which we'll see there is in the case of a corporation. Okay, so this is form N20 for Hawaii partnership. The form for a Hawaii corporation is form N30. And just like the partnership one, you just recopy the federal return that's the 1120 we saw a few chapters ago. But then, if you do business in other states, you may need to uh, do that apportionment. Here in, let's see, it's called Schedules O and P. That's here and here. So let's take a look at a Schedule P that does the apportionment for Hawaii. So if you remember in our Chapter 12, there are three factors that come into play how you allocate the income among the states. One of them is the property located in the state as compared to the worldwide uh, property owned by this corporation. Another factor is the payroll you incur in that state. And of course, the third factor is the sales in each state. So you would take that state's amount divided by the total for the whole company to get three different percentages. And you add up all three down here, then you take the average, and this is the amount now you apply as your state tax base to get the state taxable income for Hawaii subject to roughly something like 4 to 8% tax rates, depending upon the amount of taxable income. Uh, let me mention one more thing. If I mentioned in the first video something called that Wayfair case. So that's true for state sales taxes, or in the case of Hawaii, the Hawaii general excise tax. So if a non-Hawaii business sells to customers here in um, Hawaii in the amount of more than 10,000, 100,000 for the year or more than 20 transactions for the year, that out-of-state 
company has to file a form G45 and 49 reporting Hawaii general excise taxes. Now if let's say you're a business and you buy merchandise from another company outside of the state and that outside company doesn't report the, the general excise tax. You, the purchaser, are subject to that use tax. And here on this same form, you can see a line called landed value of imported for consumption. And either subject to 4% if you consume that item you bought from out of state, or if you resell it here, subject to the half a percent wholesale rate. Okay, that was that Wayfair decision. $100,000 sales for the year or 200 or more transactions for the year will tax out-of-state businesses when they make sales of merchandise or services within the state. There's other taxes that businesses and individuals are subject to. Um, real property taxes, there's even a, a transfer tax for real property ranging from a 0.1 to 1 and a something percent. There's uh, franchise taxes for specific types of businesses like banks or utilities. Okay, so that's real specific that I won't cover here. So that's it for the videos for our semester. Again, this is just a supplemental one for chapter 12. You're not going to be tested or do any homework assignments or quizzes for Hawaii taxation. Okay, that's it. Email me if you have any questions.